Hello, my name is Steve Ernst, and welcome to what is the first and very possibly last tutorial I ever make. I guess it all depends on how well received this is. Uh, I just wanted to take this opportunity to share some compositing tips and tricks that I've learned and or discovered over the years. Uh, I'm going to be using a uh, still frame from uh, the uh, Blender project open movie that they did uh, a couple years ago, I think. Uh, it was the Project Mango. So, uh, this was some green screen footage that I decided to use. This is actually a 1080p version because it's easier to work with for this tutorial, and it's only a still image because I couldn't find a decent way to actually download all of the frames for the footage. So, uh, this is what we're gonna be working with. Uh, so, without further ado, I'm gonna jump right in here. And I have here my image. Uh, drag it down to the create a new comp button. Uh, we're going to have it set at 16 bits per channel just because it's better that way. Um, and this comp here we're going to change to be called footage. And everything else can stay the same. So uh, we're going to drag this footage comp into a new comp. We're going to be working with a lot of pretty comps today because it helps organize things. This composition is going to be called final. This is going to be the one we're going to render out of. So, we're going to first thing we're going to do is we're going to keep this footage. So we're going to duplicate the footage, Control D, and we're going to go up here. And I highly recommend denoising your footage first. So I have this great plugin called Neat Video Reduce Noise, and uh, this costs like 200 bucks I think for the full pro version, which is what I have. So basically, once you're in here, you uh, find an area of noise in the footage. This black area is solid enough. Just drag a square around it until it turns green. Try to get a big area so it can sample as much noise as possible. And it's got to be a uniform area too. Click Auto Profile. It says it's too small. Don't worry about it. It'll still do it and then go into the noise filter settings and you will see that it has removed much of the noise if you hold down your middle mouse button you can see what it was so you can see here it's uh, very nicely denoised that's the before, that's the after, you might be able to tell, click apply and then you'll have your denoised footage so this is what we're actually going to be keying and we're going to use it as a mat for the other footage layer so I'm going to be using key light I'm gonna click this thing. I'm gonna control click the green right about here. And we're gonna s turn that layer off so you can see what we got here. This is what we have right out of the box. I'm just gonna bump the screen gain up to 105. And if we look at our screen mat, we will be able to see what that is. S I still wanted to preserve some of the detail around the hair, which is why that's all I'm going to do for this key. We're done, yay. So now we'll turn this back on and we'll set it to LumaMat. And you can see there we have some keyed footage with some terrible, terrible green spill. So we're going to uh, address that now. I'm going to go up here and go to Effect, uh, I believe Color Correction, Change to Color. Now I've never actually seen this method used in any tutorials anywhere. I just kind of came up with it on my own. And uh, pretty much, we're going to go back here, sample this color, and we're going to set it to hue and saturation, and setting to color. We're going to change the hue tolerance up to about 45. You can see that's kind of taking some away but we want it to change to something that's actually in the scene and not something gray or else it'll have sort of a halo around it. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to pick oh, about this medium lightish brownish color here. Something like that. Then you can see it does that. So when we change this to uh, Luma Mat again, you can see that our edges have now brownified a bit. So, much better than that nasty green, but still not perfect, but we will address that later. 
is we're going to select both of these, control shift C, pre-compose that, and call that keyed comp. And that's that. Now we're going to come over here and drag in this image that I found for a background. Uh, I looked for it after, you know, after I decided to make this tutorial. And I couldn't find it again, so uh, just find something that's that you like to use for a background. Uh, so now we have a background, we have our keyed footage. It looks pretty good for start. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do some light wrap. Uh, so what we're going to do first is we're going to pre-compose the background, just call it BG Comp. Uh, the reason I do a lot of pre-composing is because anything you use more than once you want to pre-compose. Um, that's just a good rule of thumb that I go by. So, now we have to duplicate our footage and background layer by hitting Control D. We'll drag them up here. We're going to Control Shift C to pre-compose and we're going to call this Light Wrap. And inside this here light wrap comp, we're going to duplicate this. And we're going to set it to silhouette alpha, which is going to cut everything away underneath it. And we're going to have this set to alpha mat. So basically, this just leaves us with edges. So if you shut this off, you can see that the background is using the keyed footage and then the other keyed footage is cutting away at it. So that's exactly what we want. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, top layer here. Uh, we are going to apply a matte choker effect because we want a little bit more edge than this. So we're going to make this choke one, 100. And then we're going to come up here and we're going to apply a box blur to blur this out a little bit. Repeat edge pixels. And we're going to blur it to about 35. And then we get a nice wrap around the edges of the background. Um, and to the background here, I'm going to apply another box blur. Repeat edge pixels. Uh, set that to about 20 should be good just so you fuzz out the details and it looks more like light wrapping around the edge rather than the background showing through your edges uh, that's the general idea there uh, back here in our final comp you can see it looks like it's really foggy around the edges so that's not exactly what we want we're gonna take this light wrap and we're going to set it to screen that's way too bright though, so we're going to come over here to the opacity and set it to around about probably 25. So you can see that's without, that's with. It's not a huge change, but it adds to the overall effect. And we're not finished yet, so hold on to your horses. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the background. Control D again. Drag that up there. We're going to open our keyed footage comp. We're going to take this one that has the key light effect on it, the top one. Control C to copy. And in the final comp, Control V to paste. And we're going to change it to color correction edges. And you will see what that is. That's right here. That's our edges. We're going to rename this background footage layer here. We're going to hit enter. And we're going to name it... What are we gonna name it? We're gonna name it Edge. And that's it. Okay, so then back up here, we are going to apply a levels effect. So color correction, levels. Basically what this is gonna do is gonna make the edges a little more solid white. So we're gonna drag this slider over here until it brightens things up a little bit. You can see there's starting to be some issues over here in the corners, but that's okay because this is just going to be a mat for the background. And around about there, 
here-ish should work. Looks good. Alright, let's close our key light layer because it's getting in the way. Okay. So now we're going to apply a blur just to sort of soften this a little bit. We're going to do a fast blur this time. Repeat edge pixels. Put it to about five pixels just to get it a little softer. And I'm going to turn that off, turn that off. We're going to set this to Luma Matte. So it basically shows through all the white of that footage layer. This is going to be called our Edge Matte. And uh, we're going to change this to Overlay. And it gives it more color, but it's way too much right now, so we're going to lower this opacity down to 50. So, that's without, that's with. And I'm thinking, as I'm looking at this right now, I'm going to go back into the light wrap comp. Nope, not the light wrap comp, sorry, the key comp. And I'm going to change this up a little bit, and this color here that we're replacing with, I think I will desaturate this. About like that, maybe. Maybe a little more. Yeah. Something more medium. Okay. Back here. That's eh, looking a little better. Okay. So we're going to lock the view in the final composition so that we can always see what the final is going to be. Basically, we're going to try to color correct this footage to more properly match the background just to make it blend a little better. So, we're going to apply a levels effect. And we're going to lower some of the red. Let's see here. Let's see what that does. That's the wrong way. Let's see here. This one's the one I want. Okay. That's better. Then we're going to come into the green and we're going to boost it a little bit in the highlights. Yep, 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 yep. Kind of like that. And boost the blue a little maybe. See how that does. And nah, let's not do that. Let's come back over to the red and maybe let it have a little bit more. All right, yeah, that's good. a little better. Okay, and yeah, something like that ought to be about right. We can also match the black levels a bit by going into here and crushing the black a little bit. Yeah, let's see, that's about five percent, two percent, a little bit more, I think. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay. And back into the red. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, maybe a little too much. We don't really want it to have a green halo effect around the hair. All right, that looks fairly decent. You get the idea. Just a little fiddling around in normal-ish color correction. And uh, at this point, you would add some noise to the background, so I might as well do that now. I uh, add grain. Take our preview window and drag it over here so we can match up the noise here, which we can hardly see at the moment because of the color correction we did. But it is there. I, I hope you believe me. Uh, we're going to take the size way down to so like 0.3, maybe 0.25. Take the intensity way down to about 0.4, about 0.3, I think. And we're going to click this button and go into the red channel. We're going to go over here and do the channel intensities. You can see it's a little bit more intense right now, so let's go like 1.3. 1.4. 1.5. 1.6. 1.7. 1.8. 1.9. 1.10. 1.11. 1.12. 1.13. 1.14. 1.15. 1.16. 1.17. 1.18. 1.19. 1
Uh, 1.2. This is all a lot of fiddling and just kind of eyeballing it to see how it's looking. Uh, the green, let's take the intensity down to like 0.8. And maybe bump the size up a bit too. 1.2. Mm, 1.5 looks a little better alright into the blue this is a lot stronger so we're gonna bump the intensity up to 1.4 1.5 just to make it round it's pretty good take the size up to about 1.3 maybe yep 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 okay that's looking pretty good go back to RGB and uh, change the viewing mode to final output and this of course takes a while to calculate especially if it's an animation so uh, now we got some noise and grain going on here and it's blending pretty well with our footage so you can see now if we shut off these things here that's the edges where this is the before and this is the after so we got some nice light wrap going on, we got some background wrapping around onto the uh, subject, and uh, it's looking a little better now. So uh, I guess that's about it for this uh, tutorial, I hope it wasn't too long. Uh, it's just, again, some tips that I've learned for myself and from also various resources over the years, and I hope uh, you learned something and uh, maybe you can benefit from this in the future. So. Uh, I'm Steve Ernst, and uh, take care.